So yeah. your two choices are Chris Benoit and Dean Malenko. Chris Benoit or Dean Malenko? Or Dean, or Dean Malenko, choose one. Chris Benoit. All right, come on. All right, then. I'm a big Dean Malenko guy. All right, we all should be. I like Dean Malenko. Which so here's the question. Started what was the name of Chris Benoit's Max gimmick in New Japan Pro. The Pegasus Kid. Correct. Okay. All right. Second question. Which two, two years did Chris Benoit win Best of the Super Juniors? 1989 and 1992. Oh, I could have done multiple nope. choice, right? Yes, you could have done multiple Yeah, you could have done multiple choice. What was the answer? 93 and 95. That was close. What was Chris Benoit's first American title? Give me multiple choice. Okay. A, ECW Tag Team Championship. B, NWA World Heavyweight Championship. C, ECW Television Championship. D, WCW Cruiserweight Championship. I'm going to say ECW Tag. Correct. Oh! All right, good job. Okay. <laughs> now, what was the reasoning for Chris Benoit's departure of ECW in 1995? Oh, give me multiple choice. Yeah, okay. A, not being paid. B, nearly paralyzed Sabu. C, conflict with schedule with New Japan. Or D, expired work visa. Say expired work visa. You are correct. Holy shit. <laughs> All right. And now, the final question. Who was Chris Benoit's partner when he was crowned as the inaugural WWE Tag Team Champion? In 2002? Doesn't get me here. Uh, Kurt Angle. Correct. Since you got Dean Malenko, let's get this started. Question number one. What was Dean Malenko's first interaction with the WWE slash WWF? Uh, multiple choice. All right. A, wrestler. B, security. C, referee. Or D, ring crew. I'm going to go with ring crew. Sorry, Russ. That's wrong. Referee. All right. Cool. Okay. What was Dean Malenko's first gimmick name in ECW in 1994? Multiple choice. A, submissionist. B, the shooter. C, the Iceman. Or D, Man of a Thousand Holes. What's the, uh, let's go with the shooter. Correct. All right. Next question. Mm -hmm. What was the stipulation of his last match in ECW when he faced Eddie Guerrero in 1995? Multiple choice. A, two out of three falls. B, submission match. C, no DQ. Or D, a ladder match. Ladder match. Sorry. Right. Question, right, correct choice was two out of three falls. Who was the first person he defeated when he gained his first WCW Cruiserweight title reign in 1996? Multiple choice. A. Brad Armstrong. B. Disco Inferno. C. Shinjiro Otani. Or D. The Ultimo Dragon. Ultimo. Sorry, wrong. Shinjiro Otani. C. Final question. Which w, which wrestler ended Dean Malenko's first light heavyweight championship run in the WWF? Multiple choice. A. Crash Holly. B. S. A. Elios. C. Jeremy Lin. Or D. Scotty Too Hotty. Crash Holly. Wrong again. Scotty Too Hotty. If you had to split up one of these female tag teams to create a feud. Who and which would you pick, the Kabuki, the Kabuki Warriors or Fire and Design? Really, I believe Gardino was the first one. That's fine. I'm going to say Fire and Desire. Oh, thank God. Yeah, Kabuki Warriors. Okay. 30 Fire. seconds. You got 30 okay. seconds, right? Okay. Um, Fire and Desire um, have, like, that total opposite feel. I think Sonya Deville could be a star in WWE. She has a good look. She's pretty good in the ring, and she's got a look that Vince McMahon might get behind. I love the Kabuki Warriors, but we've seen it. Sorry, it's just not going to work. Also, Mandy Rose, I think, could make a real... What they wanted to do with Eve Marie, I think, could work with Mandy Rose. Mandy Rose is a better version of Eve Marie, which I know is insane a lot. But she's smoking anyway. hot, and she makes, she'll make an excellent heel. Um, and Sonya Deville has that, like, if you push Sonya Deville right, with her MMA background. With that look, I think she could be a pretty good baby face in WWE. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know how hard and long you're going to have to work to get people to buy into Manny Rose being a credible threat in the ring to a Sonya Deville who can pretty much whip anybody's ass. But you can get instant dynamite on Wednesdays. You can get instant dynamite throwing Asuka and Kyrie Saint at each other. There's a familiarity there. There is a level of violence that these two can bring to WWE that you won't see anywhere else. You can take the handcuff of, uh, of their manager off and let them beat the living hell out of each other. That match right there can main event any TV show. It can main event NXT if you want to go replenish NXT's roster now that they're on TV. But if we're talking about a feud, let's talk about two women who are close enough to each other's level, who are familiar enough with each other, that can give us quality matches that we can really believe in. Wait, quick, for the record, Mandy Rose is needed to face. Pretty good. Pretty good. Alright, I've seen it. It is though. We don't, don't get rebuttals in quick fight. Don't give me that. Bro, our shirt is hot. Oh, oh, you're grasping at yeah, straws. Yeah, you've got some straws on that one. And I'm going to have to actually give this one to talk on that one. Yeah. If one of these Japanese groups were brought over to the USA, which one would have a better chance at succeeding? Chaos or L.I.J.? L.I.J. Okay. So you know you get chaos. Chaos. Okay. So, I'm going to start. I buzzed in first. Indeed. First off, you have the most charismatic leader. Leader. Maybe not a wrestler, but leader. In New Japan, in LIJ. Tetsuya Naito. Tranquilo. The man can do everything. He is part cruiserweight fusion, part brawler. And then you take the members of his stable. Shingo, the dragon, all fury, all dominance. You take one of my favorites in all of New Japan, Sonata. He'll get a big win streak, he'll challenge, he'll lose his challenge, but the fans want to see him come back, and that's why he gets put in that role over and over. Were you timing me? You butt. Um, no one's going to tell me who they are, right? <laughs> no. You <laughs> should um, be disqualified for that. Chaos is a way cooler name than L.I.J. If they come to the United States... People will just confuse them with the hospital, and it will make for bad TV. Chaos is a cool name with great wrestlers in the team. Because Los Ingobernables, you know, it's just the ungovernables. Yeah. By the way, he stopped talking, so I'm taking his time because he <laughs> sniped back at me last time. <laughs> uh, his time's over. So, you know what's funny? I'm, you know, I will say this much. What he didn't I'm know who Chaos is. I'm going to give that one to oh. you differently. In a cross-promotion event, having two champions battle, who would you choose to compete against the new AEW champion, Chris Jericho? Ultimo Guerrero, that was a CML World Heavyweight Champion, or Kaito Kiyomiya, Noah GHC Heavyweight Champion? Wow. Ultimo Guerrero. All right. Who's my guy? <laughs> no, Kaito Kiyomiya. Mm. No, what he is. Just go with Kaito. Just Kaito. go with Kaito. Just go with Kaito. Yeah. What, what company is he from? No, what? Pro Wrestling No. Okay. All right. Pro Wrestling No. This is starting off really well. He doesn't know who he's arguing for. Let's get that time going. <laughs> Chris Jericho is a wrestling chameleon. He is trained in Japan. He is trained in Mexico. But Chris Jericho's style blends more with Lucha Libre. He is a corazón de león. He is the lionheart over there. And you put him with Ultimo Guerrero, someone who can give him a very reminiscent feel of Lucha Libre, the way he had with Eddie, the way he had with Chavo. It's instant. I'm not trying to ask Chris Jericho, hey, go get over what that guy does, who you probably may not sync with because you don't know the Japanese style of the last few years, but you know back of your hand the Mexican style, Lucha Libre. Okay. So all yours, champ. Former champ. Chris Jericho can make anything work. He gets over a little bit of the bubbly. El Champion. So he can make this guy, who I've this never heard of. Tight man? What was it? Kaito? Let's go with Kaito. Kaito. Let's Kaito. go with the name Kaito. Where did you disqualify? And by the end of this feud, I will know who Kaito is, thanks to Chris Jericho. So... Oh. That's why <laughs> Hangman Page should have been champion. Oh, All right. I don't give these people up. Okay, then. Well, can you yeah, ask me an question? Just going to give him the point right there. In your opinion, 
Who would have benefited more from winning this past King of the Ring? Apollo Crews or Shelton Benjamin? Apollo Crews. All right. I guess that means you can show it. Okay. Let's go. Champ? Very simple. We've always known the King of the Ring to be that accomplishment that propels other wrestlers to greatness. Shelton Benjamin has his place in wrestling. One of the most explosive talents of the mid-2000s. But now, can he keep up with all the younger talents? Giving him King of the Ring is not going to propel him to the world title. That could have happened in the mid-2000s after he had that amazing match with Shawn Michaels. Mm -hmm. But Apollo Crews has yet to break through. We know what he does in the ring. We need to give him something that will push him beyond the limits that he has faced in WWE. All right. Now, the question was, who would it benefit more? Apollo Crews is very young. Shelton Benjamin is very old. He's Not very old. Older. Older in wrestling. Um, he's basically written in as a lifetime Mick Carter, a guy who never reached that next level. Paulo Cruz has lots of times. So, lots of times. So, Shelton Benjamin won King of the Ring. All of a sudden, he has a big gimmick, a big accomplishment that has eluded him his entire career. And Shelton Benjamin, with the few years he has left, could kill a King of the Ring, a King Shelton Benjamin gimmick. Well, you make some valid points. King I'm Shelton, King, King Apollo. I think this time I'm going to defer to you first, Terry, on this one. Ooh. All right. So, you, you couldn't do anything No either? influencing. No. All right, fine. I guess we'll have to go back to me, but I'm going to have to go with Doc on this one for Apollo. Because that's what they've been going for more recently. Back to who would have done it more. And to be honest, Shelton has earned his place, as he said before. He's had a career. Right, Which one of these two wrestling promotions should get a major American promotion? TV promotion. Wait, which? You mean which American TV deal? American TV which, deal. Which of these promotions deserve a major TV deal? Okay. Deserve, not need. Deserve. Right? deserve. Well, they don't need them. DDT or All Japan Pro Wrestling? Oh, no, you plus first. All Japan Pro Wrestling. All right. Go right ahead. All Japan Pro Wrestling is better than DDT Wrestling. They have the better roster, they are run better, and they have a better fan base. If you bring All Japan Pro Wrestling to the States and expose that quality of TP programming, you're going to have another player emerge on the scenes. Not quite up there yet, but if you expose the American audience to that Japanese style of wrestling and not what they have in DDT, you got yourself a hell of a TV show, man. Hey! Okay, well... All Japan Wrestling, okay, All Japan Wrestling doesn't necessarily need an American TV deal. All Japan Wrestling has a rich history. People know that Ted, maybe not you, but people who know wrestling know that that's where Ted DiBiase made his money over there. They know that some of the best talents like Giant Baba were in All Japan. People know DDT because that's where Koda and Kenny are from. And today's crowd like you only know Koda and Kenny. They don't know Ted DiBiase and Giant Baba. So go with DDT. I'm actually going to go with Doc on this one. I had to really think about it. I'm like, he doesn't even know who's on All Japan. That's all? It's All Japan. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you think you deserve to win. I know. So. Question one. TNA Unbreakable. 2005. Okay, let's hear your answers. Go. Yeah. Orlando, Florida. Okay. All right, correct. Oh, thank God. Next question TNA, Bound for Glory, 2006. Answers? Nashville, Tennessee. You're both wrong. Plymouth Township, Michigan. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, do, do the one, do the thing. Of course. <laughs> well, we have another TNA question TNA Lockdown, 2007. All right, let's see, the, let's see those answers, gents. Charlotte, North Carolina? I'm afraid not. St. Charles, Missouri. WWE Royal Rumble 2004. Let's go. That was my other city, Boston, Massachusetts. Actually, actually. actually it's good. Good. That's Wait. WWE WrestleMania. Two X's. WrestleMania 20. 20. 
We can literally see it from here. New York, we are here. We yeah, can look out the window. WWE Insurrection 2001. All right, gents. London, England. Indeed. Now, NWA Bunkhouse Stampede. Ooh. 1988. Memphis, Tennessee. Nope. The answer is Union Dale, New York. We're now down to question number eight. ECW, Guilty as Charged, 2001. One. Mm -hmm. Not leave New Jersey. New York, New York. I was going to write New York. ECW Anarchy Rules. Wow. 1999. Two. One. <laughs> Baltimore, Maryland. And you? Philly. Nope. Villa Park, Illinois. WCW Super Brawl Revenge. 2001. He, you, what the f he didn't. Okay. Neither of those answers. It's Nashville, Tennessee. Now that Chris Jericho has become the inaugural AEW champion, how do you plan his reign, and do you have beating him for the title? You put the belt on Jericho because he's the most iconic face on your TV. Worldwide. Right? Maybe not in the U.S. Maybe some people say, no, it's... It's, it's Moxley because I remember Dean Ambrose. So maybe some people who are big, avid NJPW fans will say it has to be Kenny Omega. But Jericho is the right choice because when you're entering the United States TV market, you need the biggest face that will sell seats to a casual viewer. So Jericho is in that position because he is the most universally known wrestler on their roster. You cannot give him the belt and then have him lose it in a three-month span. This has to be something where you allow Jericho to flex this version of himself because the, the U.S. market and the casual viewer may remember, oh, that's the Ayatollah of rock and roll. That's the cool guy. Wow, he's so old now. Or they might remember that, I don't really give a crap, you did this to yourself, Shawn Michaels guy. They, you don't know what iteration, so you need to let them know this iteration. So this, Jer this Jericho reign has to go at least into WrestleMania season for the WWF. Because that's around the time when the whole wrestling world, they get heated up and all eyes are on wrestling. The closer you get to April. Which means from now to April, Chris Jericho needs or should be the AEW champion. Gaining that attention. People tuning in weekly. And as you get closer, he doesn't necessarily need to drop it at WrestleMania. He could drop it in March. He could drop it in May. Hell, he could drop it in February. But you need to get into that WrestleMania season bracket for him to lose it. And how you build him to that, well, we know that Cody's going to get a crack at it. But people are going to look at that as some form of self-induced nepotism if Cody dethrones him. Cody, you're the executive vice president, or one of. So can it be you? Plus, Cody, you're putting on the best matches, so maybe just have better uh, blood feuds. You're wrestling MJF soon enough. You've been building towards that. So it's not going to be Cody. Do you want to go Moxley? Jericho and Moxley have history. They've done it. They've done the Ambrose Asylum in WWE. Is there anyone else? Are you going to say it's going to be Pentagon? Pentagon pretty much is resigning to be a tag with his brother right now. Do you go back and say Adam Page? Maybe not within the first year. Maybe you let Adam build up that... That train. So I would feed him Cody, right? Let Jericho pass Cody. Let Jericho pass Adam Page a second time. Let that loss be a part of Adam Page's development as who he is. You know, I've lost this guy twice. Eventually, down the line, I'll get him, but not now. You can have Cody, uh, you know, challenge again. You can have Kenny Omega get into the fold, but Kenny Omega has to prove on the U.S. level that he could be a big star. You don't prove it just by winning the title. You prove it by wrestling in a way that U.S. TV audiences can buy into. So I go back to Moxley. That's the only person who is primed and in the best position in this country with North American viewership to dethrone Jericho. And that should happen around a February or a March. That should happen at a big show because we know AEW is not going to say our biggest show of the year is in April. They're not going to do that. So you build up a show, you build up that anticipation before WrestleMania. Jericho having beaten so many great guys, Jericho having tagged with so many people. But when it comes down to it, it's the former 
because I assume he won't hold on to it long. New Japan U.S. champion, John Moxley, who people will say, I know that guy. Different name, but I know that guy, and I remember watching him. Rachel Jericho. The diehards will love it because the diehards are, are, are happy that Moxley's been liberated. He's the right person to bring the right level of toughness. Can Kenny Omega and Jericho recreate their Wrestle Kingdom match? The answer is probably no, because Kenny needs to do different things to develop himself. But Moxley can always have a fight with Jericho. Moxley can beat the living piss, and Jericho can give it right back. So the point of this whole thing is, you need to show the casual viewer this son of a bitch, Chris Jericho, pushing 50 almost, is our world champ. You know who he is. You know what he brings to the table. Look at all the guys he's beaten in his path. But it's a guy from his past, more so than Kenny Omega, that you know well and you know what he brings to the table and the violence. You're not going to beat Chris Jericho in the eyes of the viewer unless it's violently. And Mosley's the guy to do it. Very nice, very passionate, very, I like it, I like it, I like it, Doc. Very nice. All right, then. Uh, so, uh, let's see, get, yes, see what sir. you got. I think we both agree that uh, Jericho was the right choice to be the first champion and that it needs to be a long reign. I will tell you what I think they should do with Jericho, and then I will tell you what I think who should dethrone him. I think this is going to be a long reign for Jericho for me. You have him slowly descend into madness as he is the man who never got his thank you, as he looks around and see all these ungrateful young guns, and then Chris Jericho can become paranoid. Like, they're all after me, because I'm the old guy, right? I'm the weak link, that's not what you think. That's what, and then he starts taking them out one by one. Kenny Omega, MJF, the Young Bucks, Cody. Chris Jericho causes chaos. Maybe he disappears with the title for a little while. And, but, and not like Brock Lesnar, that's the difference. Chris Jericho will disappear, he'll make videos, he'll make appearances. You, you will still see Chris Jericho. Make him the most hated champion. Like, who's this WWE guy stealing this belt? Still putting on good matches and whatnot. And eventually, for me, the man who has to be Chris Jericho, not John Moxley, Paige. He has to get his win back. What is the point to me for giving the title to an old guy, an amazing old guy, if we're not going to put over a young guy who can take this company 10, 15 years in the future. Moxley's already falling apart. He's injured every other month, tricep, elbow, knee, whatever it is. And I love Moxley, but I think you tell the story of a younger, more athletic page finally outworking Jericho and getting his big win back after Jericho has caused nothing but chaos and destruction and descended into madness. And who's the question on who is the best person to actually take on Jericho and take it from him? I'm sorry, but I have to give it to Moxley. Man, if I had to choose, there would have been a new champ. So you're lucky you didn't refer to me. What happens next month? Stay tuned. <laughs>